Hey guys, Filmington here, back with another video. This one's going to be somewhat short. I wanted to focus on two of my most recent sales, as well as two cards that I got back in a BGS2 PSA crossover attempt. So, haven't been making a ton of videos like this in some time, just because I've been really busy buying, selling, as well as prepping for the Rookie Card Explosion Box. So, let's start with the sales. I actually just got back from Minneapolis last night, too, so I have been traveling a lot for my primary job. So, this is the first card I sold um, this week. It is a 2010 Bowman Chrome Prospect Red Refractor, J.D. Martinez. It's a BGS 9 with really nice subgrades, a half away from 9.5. It's a Red Refractor, so it's a number to 5. It's, of course, his first Bowman card. He did not have an autograph this year. He did have one in 2011 uh, with Bowman Chrome, but because he did not have one in 2010, it makes this card especially valuable. Doesn't hurt that it's a number to 5. Doesn't hurt that it has good subgrades, and it doesn't hurt that it's numbered 1 of 5, which I wouldn't put a big premium on, but some people might. So, I bought this card for about 420 bucks four months ago or so, and I sold it for, I believe, like 575 580 I want to say. Um, now, not the best profit for me, not what I was certainly shooting for, um... There are certain players in my collection, uh, certain players that I buy that I have a, a more longer term exit strategy for, that I'm willing to hold for longer, that I'm wanting to hold for longer. Um, but if you start to do that, you start to kind of, kind of become a quasi hoarder with all the cards you pick up, then you're probably, probably going to be retaining some dead inventory. You're going to be taking on some massive losses and um, you just got to learn how to churn the inventory in this business. It's a lesson I learned back in 2014 when I ended up with a ton of Taiwan Walkers and Jose Fernandez cards, Jordano Venturas that are pretty much worthless today. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm happy with the, uh, the $70 profit here, um, given the pretty short timetable from which I, you know, from, from when I own the card, the holding period there. Next up, made a lot more in this one, also paid a lot more for it. This is a 2017 Bowman Chrome Purple autograph, Ronald Acuna. His first Bowman Chrome, this is numbered to 250. This is a BGS 9.5 Auto 10. Bought it for a little over 1,000, maybe like 1040, 1050. Uh, back in, I want to say like November, October, November. And then I turned it around for 1,451. So that leaves me an after fee profit of about 200, a little over 200 bucks, which, uh, because I spent so much on the card, you'd think that I'd probably be hoping for more, but I actually purchased another one for within $10 of what I paid for this. And it has much better subgrades. We're talking three nine and a halfs and a 10. This has got three nine and a halfs and a nine. So this is the bare minimum nine and a half. So this is going to sell for routinely under what a PSA 10 would go for, even though it has an autograph of, of a 10, where the, the card with superior subs, the three nine and a halfs and a 10, also considered a, a gem mint, is going to sell for about the same price, maybe even a little bit more than a PSA 10. So... Difference might be 20, 25% greater than what this one sells for. So the, the profit taking ability on that one will be a, a lot, a lot greater, I think. So, um, happy to, to get rid of this one. Um, I'm holding on to a lot of young players that had terrific rookie seasons, namely Ronald Acuna, um, and Juan Soto. And I, it wouldn't be in my best interest to to kind of to to hold all that guy all those guys and and to to retain all of that risk when I don't need to when there is some chance to take some um, profit opportunities albeit not you know I'm not getting a, a 50% return or a 75% return but I'm getting a decent amount of my money amount of my money back and I'm getting some liquidity where I can turn that around and buy some other cards. All right, so that is it for the sales this week. I was definitely aided by eBay's specials. I don't know which ones that uh, the sellers or the buyers took advantage of, if it was the eBay box or like the 10 or 15% coupon, but um, it definitely helped me there, I think. 
And in the next part of this video, I wanted to show off my Beckett to PSA recent crossover submission results. Just got two cards back in the mail. I submitted those two cards in their current or in their original slabs from Beckett. Uh, I assigned a minimum grade of 10 to each of them. I did not want to have to get back a nine and crack it out of its holder and submit it back to Beckett and risk the chance of getting a worse grade. So that is the process that I, 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 I used. And um, generally, you have a slim chance to none of getting a crossover 10 if you've submitted a card with less than nine and a half subs throughout. So I made sure the cards I chose had at least nine and a half subs. Now, back in December, just for a little background, I came up with a list and I showed about nine cards on YouTube of um, crossover candidates. I originally thought that it made sense to submit all of them to PSA for a potential 10 grade. Uh, what I neglected was that um, for autograph cards that have an auto of 10 with BGS, um, ones that are graded nine and a halfs, if they have really good subs, so quad nine and a halfs, or even two nine and a halfs and two tens, or three nine and a halfs and one ten, there's a chance that these cards could sell for the same amount, if not a little bit more, than a PSA 10. So that is why I weeded down the list from about nine to about two. In most cases, that was the, that was, um, the, the condition. And the, the Ronald Acuna, the one I just talked about with three nine and a halfs and a 10, that's one that fall, fell off the list. I also had a 2011 Trevor Bauer Red Refractor um, Bowman Chrome Autograph that had three nine and a halfs and a 10, so I did not submit that to PSA. And the cards I got back, I'll show you now. Oh, this is the Walker Bueller 2018 Topps Heritage. Real one autograph, red ink, number to 69. Would have looked sweet with the um, the red Sharpie, but did not make minimum grade. So I got it. Um, I got it back in a nine and a half year. This, as you can see, has quad nine and a halfs. So the, the bare minimum qualifications to get that true gem doesn't have any 10 subs. If you look at the card, it might be a little overgraded. It just doesn't look, doesn't look, um, it doesn't scream at you and say like, wow, this is a gem. This is a really sharp card. I don't know what it is. It just might be some like wear around the corner, especially in the back. Give that a look there. Um, I can see why, why uh, PSA was like, nah, maybe next time, bud. So really sweet card, though. I love Walker Bueller. This is my best card of his. And um, the Ronald Acuna in a PSA 10 equivalent, I believe, sold for $3,000 in the offseason. In the off season, when the card market for modern cards was fairly slow, so imagine if Walker Bueller ends up better than Acuna. Uh, he's a pitcher, so it probably wouldn't matter anyways. But all right, next card was a 2016 Bowman Chrome autograph Juan Soto. That one I submitted. It was a BGS nine and a half auto nine with two ten subgrades and two nine and a half subgrades. So better subs. Uh, was a, a half grade away from a BGS 10. And I got it crossed over. Woo! So as you can see, I didn't get the um, the auto graded. Uh, wasn't going to risk that. That'd be dumb. Plus, it kind of looks a little convoluted once you get the um, Gem Mint 10. Bowman Chrome cards tend to have a lot of language up here, so it's really busy. And then you get an autograph grade of a 10 underneath it. Just, I don't know. It just doesn't look right to me. I'm sure there is a... Um, a premium built into to cards that have that, but um, wasn't willing to go that road, especially because of uh, the clearly not perfect autograph. But having said that, let's be fair. I mean, this autograph is really that bad. I have a lot of cards where the autograph is much streakier, much messier, falling off the the card there. But I don't really consider this a a reason to devalue the card. So I will be looking for PSA ten prices on this uh, when I try to sell this. Um, yeah, a little streak there by the J at the end of it, but who cares? Who cares? Come on. Um, purchased this for about three ninety five, and this was in the off season. This was in like, I want to say like November, December, and uh, PSA tens go for six seventy five, seven hundred, I believe, right now. So, 
Who knows? Could go up even more. Could drop a little bit. But I'm looking for a a decent profit ta profit taking opportunity on this one. So that is it, guys. Hopefully you liked what you saw. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, and later tonight I will be going live with Jeff Airtime Cards. We're going to be doing a fantasy baseball preview around six o'clock Eastern time. That's Friday, March fifteenth tonight. Uh, I'm going to be giving away some some cards and, or packs too, and making it a little bit more interactive versus our first go around at it so um that is it guys like comment subscribe do you gotta do